have been uh, keeping up <laughs> with the housing market here in Atlanta. And the housing market in Atlanta is absolutely crazy at the moment. It's a, it's a hot mess. I am seeing houses in the hood, what I know to be the hood. Maybe there's some gentrification going on there, going for 27 to $3,000 a month. All right, here's the thing. I know that the average person in America, average, makes 30 to $35,000 per month, per month. So the average person cannot afford to rent these houses in the hood. And I, like, I saw one house, 1,900 square feet, $4,500 per month. That is $50,000 a year in rent. What did I just say? The average person makes 35,000. So even if you had a couple who were both making 35,000, which is 70,000, they could not afford to rent that house. And I've been watching a lot of housing content and it, it's just literally crazy what's going on. Uh, the Fed raises the interest rate the mortgage price drop, the, the prices, the, the mortgage rate drops a little bit. Uh, how's it like one of the things I'm, I'm seeing, and I've seen this in the Atlanta Zillow is homeowners are starting to cut housing prices. But what I am, what fascinates me is what is going on in the rental market, because I do believe there will be significant um, opportunities for people to buy houses in the coming months because you're seeing a lot of information. You're seeing that we're not going to experience what we experienced in 2008. And let's go ahead and put 2008 in, in um, context. If you go to Wikipedia, the recession of 2008 was like 2007 to 2009, like a year and six months. But if you actually dig deeper, you will see high unemployment went on to 2013. Unemployment in 2012 was 8%. At the peak of the recession, unemployment was 10%. So even though the recession from a technical standpoint was only from 2007 to 2009, the ramifications went on for almost five, six years. And there are still people who have not recovered from that recession of 2007 and nine. So what we saw, and I remember this, cause uh, I was living in an apartment at the time and there was a house that was like big house. House was about 4,000 square feet sitting on the acre. This house price, it went on the market for 225,000. And then six years later, I looked up that house again and it was back on the market, but this time it was on the market for 500,000. And I recently looked up that house again and the house is close to 800,000. So whoever bought that house, they bought that house for 225 and stayed in it because they didn't because the house went on the market uh, one other time. That house would have appreciated 600, almost $700,000 since the last recession. Right. Last night I did a training and the training was lit. It was for the intellectual property school. And that training last night was worth the price of the whole course. So what you want to do is go below, get in the intellectual property school today. Because right now, what is there is going to take you weeks to do. And once again, I'm not selling you that, you know, you can take this course and in 30 days, you're going to be making all this money. I'm telling you, you're looking at a three-year journey. For many of you, you can probably get it done in a year. 
you know, once again, the to meet expectations, expectations must be properly set. So go ahead and get in there because I'm gonna be uploading the training today and sending out emails and stuff. But you wanna get into the intellectual property school because last night's training will teach you how to play the game and position you to live where you wanna live in these United States of America. So go in that first comment, go ahead and get it. And I will see you guys in the intellectual property school. And I'm about to make an observation and it's going to be based upon all of the economic factors that I have seen. We are going to be in for a turbulent time in the economy. However, as long as we have a shortage in housing, because here's the thing, there's a book called Upshift or Upstream is on Amazon. I'll put the link below because I'll go ahead and find it. And it talks about demographics. And this is the technical truth. We don't currently have enough housing for everyone that wants housing. We currently just don't have enough housing. So that fact, that's a fact, we don't have enough housing, is going to keep rental prices very, very high. If you looked at what happened in New York and San Francisco during the pandemic, rent dropped for about eight to 12 months and it went right back up. So even when rent drops, it is not a long-term situation. So what I see is there's gonna be turbulence in the housing market. You're gonna see price cuts, but I just don't see a crash that we had in the last recession. I don't see a crash. And what do I mean? Uh, I was dating a girl whose house lost 50% of its value. I don't see that kind of crash. I see a correction because once again, we don't have enough housing for the people who need housing currently. And that's going to keep the rental rates high and that's going to keep home price. Because like literally, I look at Zillow every day and I am seeing houses for rent in the hood, 25, 27, $3,000 a month. And I'm looking and I'm not seeing um, cheaper houses. This is, this is pretty much what the market will bear. So there are people and it kind of makes sense because during the global reset, people are shifting down. So let's say you were renting a house in Sandy Springs for 5,000. You may shift down to renting that house in the hood for 2,700. So from that standpoint, it makes sense. But from the standpoint of the general market, the general market cannot afford these rents. So what's gonna happen is these people are gonna have to live way out. I mean, way out, I'm talking 30, 40, maybe an hour away from their job because you can go an hour outside of Atlanta and you can rent an apartment for 800, 900, 1,000 bucks. You can do that. But inside Atlanta, mm -mm. I mean, I looked up my old apartment, which I was paying 1,100 bucks for. That apartment it was a two bedroom, two bath apartment, 1,200 square feet. That apartment is now going for $2,500. A $1,400 raise in rent. And it was over a 10 year period. It's been, it's been like 12, 14 years. But still, this is what, I, like I said, I don't see, I see rent maybe temporarily going down but I feel this is what, you know, Jimmy McMillan, when he was running for mayor of New York, rent's too damn high. I don't really see this relaxing or re being reduced because once again, we don't have enough housing for the people who need it. And for people, you know, and what you're seeing in the new, the resale market, the people who are selling their houses, you're seeing a correction. You're not seeing a crash because these houses were overpriced to begin with. So they're coming back to reality, but what, what does reality look like? And reality is still high. 
reality is still high. So the average person is still being priced out of the housing market from a rental standpoint and the buying standpoint, because I saw that the average house price in America went down to 404, which is still beyond Henry and Sally, this couple who are making $35,000 a piece. That house is still beyond their economic means. So housing is a hot mess right now. And what you're gonna see is a distinct segmentation of the classes. What I predict is gonna happen is rich people are gonna live in the cities because they're gonna be the only ones who can afford it. And what's gonna happen is like, years and years ago, I used to live in the West End and I was over there with the drone and I saw these two white women just walking around the neighborhood. And literally, if you had bought houses in the West End 20 years ago, you could have got houses in the West End for 20, 25 years ago, 30 and $40,000. And these houses were huge. These houses were huge. I mean, three, four and five and six and 7,000 square feet. If you had bought like 10 houses in the West End 25 years ago, and you had spent maybe three, 300, 400,000, you would be sitting on three to 4 million a day. These houses are now going for three and $400,000. And this is the thing, the West End is still the hood. It's still the hood because one of the things that happened is, and this is one of the things I saw when I was living in East Lake, you have a lot of practical older people who actually paid their house off. So that's why they're still in their neighborhood because they don't have a mortgage and they have enough money coming in to pay the property taxes, except many of them will be forced to sell because the property taxes, because I mean, property taxes on a $30,000, $40,000 house was little or nothing. And what you're gonna see is as the property prices keep climbing, these four people are gonna be forced to sell because they cannot pay the property taxes. It, it may get to the point where the property taxes may be 25% of their total annual income, which is steep. So that's one of the things, but real estate, I suspect is gonna remain a hot mess for years to come. I don't really, like once again, I just don't see a crash, like what happened in 2008, 9, 10. I don't see that kind of crash. Uh, once again, you will see these houses coming back to reality because they were overpriced to begin with. So you will see that, I will see a big correction because if you see a house that they were asking 650,000 and then they, they, the price comes down to 495,000, I would consider that a correction because once again, these houses were overpriced. I was like, I've been looking on Zillow and just look, this couple bought a house in Florida for $400,000 and then they listed the house for a million almost three times what they paid for it. That kind of foolishness is going to stop because the market can only take so much. And once again, the typical house price in America is beyond the average uh, income of Americans. And this is what's wild. In 1970, average income was about $10,000 a year. You know what the average price house of a price was in 1970? 25,000. So in the 70s, as recent as the 70s, housing was two to three times income. Today, housing is 10 to 15 times average income. So these people cannot afford these houses. And once again, with the segmentation, you're gonna see just rich folks living in the cities. You're like in Nashville, like right, this has been going on for Nashville for a minute. Like average income people cannot live in the city limits of Nashville unless they are house hacking or living with someone. They just can't do it. So what you're going to see is the stratification, the segmentation of the classes. And it's going to get to the point, like if you meet someone that's like, yeah, I live in the city, you're going to know that they're doing very well financially just by the simple fact of where they live. And this is something that's kind of weird. Years and years ago, when I was in the storage auction business, uh, there was a U-Haul storage facility off Peter Street. 
And way back when they had these lofts in these areas that were million dollar lofts. And at that time, Peter Street was straight up hood. So what you're, what, what you're gonna see is a group of people, a certain amount of the population that are not going to mind paying a lot for a property in the hood. And I, I was out recently in the West Side, which was the West Side is where Morehouse, Spelman, AU Center is, toward leaning toward the West End, leading toward, um, that has exploded in development. If you go on Northside Drive heading toward, you know, Northside Drive is where the Mercedes-Benz Stadium is. In the last five years, there has been an incredible amount of construction and, and building. Like, I remember going down North, Northside Drive 10 years ago, nothing but hood, crack houses. Now you can literally go down Northside Drive and you're gonna see luxury apartments on both sides of the street. So what they're doing is they're pushing the hood further and further out because to me, the North side drive, like North side drive has two segments. You have the North side drive, which is over to, towards Sandy Springs, million dollar mansions, long driveways and gates. And then once you get to Techwood home area where the headquarters of Coca-Cola is, then it, it starts to go down, but now what is happening is that north side from Sandy Springs is pushing and um, they're pricing people out the hood. This is what I see in that area of north side drive by um, Mercedes Benz Stadium. A few years ago, I was looking at buying a condo that was over there because, you know, I was thinking about doing Airbnb, you know, all the rage because the condo was literally walking distance to Mercedes Benz Stadium. And Mercedes-Benz Stadium has the Atlanta Falcons game. It has the uh, SEC championship. So there's a good opportunity to rent. And th at the time, this condo was like 2,500 square feet. It had a rooftop terrace. I don't think, I, it was going for 205 when I was looking at it. That condo now is probably gonna be every bit of 750,000 right now. And I think that price is gonna hold because of where it is because it's very close to the stadium. It's very close to the AU Center. And what you're going to see is what I call the price out game. We cannot make people in the hood change their behavior. I have seen it. I've lived in the hood. I've seen people in the hood get money and still remain hood residents. So we, you, money is nothing's going to change these people. So what they're going to do is create an economic moat to price these people outside the hood. And what, what you're going to see in the next 20, 30 years, because it's going to take some time, is a transformation. They're going to root all of these hood people out by pricing them out, making it so inhospitable for them to live in that neighborhood. Because um, there's a restaurant called Optimum it's a it's a seafood place. It's really nice. It's over there. Uh, there's some expensive apartments, and it's just like if you are a hood resident making hood income, which is sub twenty five thousand dollars per year, you're not going to be able to live over there. Just not. Even if there's two of you, you're not going to be able to live over there because they're pricing people outside these hoods. And I, and you know, and I really started to think, why is this happening? And if you know anything about Atlanta, downtown Atlanta, like Centennial Park area, little five points over there by Georgia State is dead. There's nothing really going on in the terms of restaurants. Um, you know, you have Georgia Pacific, you have a few other um, Fortune 1000 companies in the area, but if you were to go to downtown Atlanta at 5 p.m., it would be dead. And what I am seeing is this big push because there's downtown Atlanta here and then there's the west side here. And I predict within the next 20 years, downtown Atlanta is going to be bumping again. It's going to be on and popping because they're going to force out all these hood people, these hood businesses. They're going to push them out. 
and they're going to economically price them out because that's a very desirable area. You're close to downtown, you're close to business. Now, if you were to go to Midtown, the difference between Midtown Atlanta and downtown Atlanta is night and day. In Midtown, there's a lot of walkable bars and taverns. You can like literally park your car and go from bar to bar to eatery. They've, they've, they've done that to Midtown. And then Midtown bumps up against Buckhead which has a lot that's going on. And one of the things that they did years and years ago was they pushed out all the clubs where there's a bunch of new constructions and new luxury apartments. They used to be tongue and groove and some other clubs. They actually pushed them out. And what you're going to see is what they did in Buckhead is they pushed them out. And this is one of the things you go to Linux mall, you will see armed guard, armed police hanging out at Linux mall right now. So, uh, I did a video talking about the rich people of Atlanta are pissed off and what you're going to see, I expect in the future that Buckhead is going to separate from the city of Atlanta because Sandy Springs did it and Sandy Springs was the template. Sandy Springs did it and everyone is looking at Sandy Springs. Sandy Springs has so much money that, um, you know, when I was in the car rental business and I had all my cars stolen and I started to, I actually saw um, some of the same cops two and three times and they have the latest technology. Uh, they, they have like my assistant, someone hit them and she called the cops and the cop was able to show her on his computer, the lady hitting her car because they have all of these cameras all over Sandy Springs and they have all this high tech. And what's going to happen is Buckhead, which bumps up against Brookhaven, which is a very, very wealthy area. Houses in Brookhaven are more expensive. Like talk about that area. If you go down Peachtree Street, they did the same thing because that used to be moving off to Doraville, which was kind of, which was hood, which was hood. It was a Hispanic hood, but it was hood. That's no longer the case. They have gone ahead and built up that corridor of Peachtree Road which luxury housing, some of those apartments are more expensive than my apartment. So this is, this is the, the wave of the future. If we cannot make these people change their behavior, we're going to price them out. We're going to make it so hard where they can't even think about living in these neighborhoods. You can't even think about it because, um, I'm waiting to see what they're going to hit me over the head for when I renew, cause I've already decided I'm going to stay here. And I have no clue to what the increase is going to be, but I know there's going to be an increase. I know there's going to be an increase. So we're going to see what's going to happen when I renew my lease. But once again, man, um, if you do not have a business and additional income, you're not going to be able to live in a desirable area. You will be able to live way out. You can, you will be able to live 30, 40, 50 minutes from your job in you know, fairly nice neighborhoods. Cause that's kind of like, it's not the country it's past the suburbs, but you know, um, it, the rent's cheaper out there. The housing's cheaper because it's so far removed from the city and the jobs. And this is one of the reasons that Sandy Springs is booming because I mean, I want you to think you can buy a million dollar house on um, Mount Vernon, right? And literally have a six to 10 minute commute to your job. That, that, that's the draw because if you're going to have those kind of neighborhoods, they need to be close to these six figure and seven figure jobs. So yeah, you, you just, if you're making average income in the next 10 years, you're not going to be able to live anywhere that you might want to live. Cause like I said, you will see a correction in housing prices, but you're not going to see a crash. There's not going to be a crash. There's not going to be, um, what happened in 2008. I don't see that because of the simple fact that we don't have enough housing for the people we already have. And guess what? We're creating new people every day, every day three to 4 million people turn 18 in the United States of America. So that's every year we have 40 million people 
who enter the age of adulthood and they start renting apartments, they start getting jobs. So we don't have enough housing for those people. And this is why housing is gonna remain really high in like states like California. I don't care what happens with California. The rent in California is never coming down. It's never coming down. Uh, the rent in California, housing is never coming down. You know, California is the world's fifth largest economy by itself. California is the world's fifth largest economy. This is behind China, Japan, and Germany. The state of California is the world's fifth largest economy. There's so much money in California that the price, these prices are never going down. They're never going down. So what is one to do? And this is my guidance. You need to step up your game. If you wanna live where you wanna live and be able to afford that, you need to step your game up. You know, cause I got a video that's gonna be coming on the corporate game, um, playing the game. You need to start playing the game because everyone is hoping what happened in 2008, 2009 would happen again. I don't see that happening. Now I do see that happening in the stock market. I see the stock market because this is the longest time that the stock market has been down since 1950, I believe. And the longer that this goes on, the more opportunity it will be. Because once again, the stock market at some point is going to bounce back. When? Who knows? But it's going to bounce back. So if you are someone who has the intestinal fortitude to put money in the stock market and see your portfolio dip a little bit and just keep putting money in the stock market in about 10, 15 years, you'll be straight. But this is not a short term play. This ain't, this ain't a short term play at all, unless you're doing options trading, which options traders are loving it right now. The volatility in the market, this is something they can work with. This is something they can make moves with. But if you're just a regular buy and hold investor, you're going to be holding for you're going to be holding for a minute. You're going to be holding for a minute. But I actually see the rent in the hood going up because there's gonna be so many people applying for these properties because they can't live in Buckhead, they can't live in Brookhaven, they can't live in Sandy Springs. Um, there was a woman who had cancer, because I saw it on, in the news, and she got evicted. And this woman, the police used a taser on her, and this was in Sandy Springs. So well, one of the things you're gonna have see like this is something I saw years and years ago. Uh, I, I used to be a speeder to some regards, I'm still am. So I had my time in traffic court. And I remember years and years ago, I was in the DeKalb recorders court where they don't allow you to bring cell phones in the court. Like at the time, you could not bring your cell phone in the court. You had to leave it in your car. And I was in there and I remember this judge going off on this beautiful, she was straight up beautiful, blonde, blue white girl. And he went off on her and hit her over the head with like a thousand dollar fine. I, at that point, I got scared. <laughs> I got scared because I'm like, if they're doing this to Miss Ann, what is he going to do to me? And, you know, because this is one of the games I used to play. I used to reset my court date multiple times because um, he called me up and then he called the officer. The officer wasn't there. and He was just dismissed. Boom. And I walked out free man. And I was like, OK, that worked. So. Once again, with that, this white girl, she didn't know how to play the game. So America is built on, America is a corporation. All of these cities are corporations. So if you go on to play the game, you need to create your own corporation so you understand how corporations work and so you can start playing the game because um, women, women are going to jail like at the highest rate in history which means that this new regime doesn't care. Doesn't care. Only thing they care about, you got that money. If you don't have that money, the system has no use for you. And the system will disregard you and treat you like crap. I don't care how pretty you are. 
Uh, you know, a lot of you guys remember when I used to talk about Bailey, this girl who was absolutely gorgeous. She had been arrested five times. The system has changed 20 years ago. The system changed 20 years ago. So for you guys out there who are talking about, you know, uh, I'm probably gonna do a separate video about this topic, so I'm not even gonna mention it. But once again, um, rent ain't going down. So you got two choices. You can live way out, or you can adjust your income to live where you wanna be. That's your choices. Because uh, I see, once again, all of these properties in the hood, I see them actually going up higher because there's gonna be more people applying for those properties than actually um, Brookhaven, Sandy Springs, Buckhead. And I have not even been on the South side in years. I don't even know what's going on over there. But, you know, you could be living in Jonesboro, which is like 35 minutes outside of Atlanta. So, um, when Hurricane Katrina hit and they brought all those Hurricane Katrina refugees, that's where they went. They put them over there. And that whole South Side, the, the complexion of the whole South Side changed, completely changed. It used to be a sleepy bedroom community. South Side got lit when all those people from the, from the Lou hit. I mean, oh my God, all the things that started to happen over there was crazy. The police got activated. They had to hire more police officers. Crime started spiking, all kinds of stuff. So you saw with the infusion of a certain demographic to a neighborhood, you saw the neighborhood completely change. And one of the things that's going to happen, once again, infusions. This is what's happened in the west side on North Side Drive. This is what happened over here on Peachtree Road. Um, they're infused wealthy capital in these neighborhoods. And once again, they're, they're pushing all the poor people out, the hood people, the gangsters, the gang bangers, they're pushing them out. Uh, what, I, what I'm seeing in my building is a lot of people recently have moved out. And I think it was because, like I said, we're gonna see what they're gonna hit me over the head with for that renewal. And the renewal, like I said, this is the new economic reality in America. Highly desirable areas, you're not gonna be able to live in unless you have the economic means to support living there. That's the new game. These, these are called economic moats. And these moats are gonna protect these neighborhoods and it's gonna bring in a different class of people. So it, it, it is what it is, man. It is what it is. So if you wanna live somewhere nice, you need to raise your paper up and also something else too. You need to make sure, uh, cause uh, some people have said this stuff like, uh, I check my credit report, not every day. I used to wake up every day and check my credit reports. I used to check my bank accounts and stuff. And that's kind of gone down to once a week because you know, my credit profile is super thick. It's super thick. I got $750,000 in personal credit. So my credit profile is super thick. And even if something adverse happened, it's gonna be kind of hard to take my credit profile. But um, you're gonna need to make sure that your credit file is accurate. Because like when I moved in this place, they approved me in an hour, which lets me know that a human being wasn't looking at my uh, credit report. It was all automated. So if you are in a situation where you have funky stuff on your credit report, heaven forbid you have an eviction. If you have an eviction, you're not gonna be able to live in the choice property. It ain't happening. So what you need to do is get yourself a gang of money. And like, if you got an eviction, what you need to do is get yourself three to four months rent and have a story. The reason I was evicted was I was in the hospital. I was sick. You need to have a story because once these automated systems see what's on your credit report, you're screwed. So you need to go ahead and start working on improving your credit score, your credit report today, because you're not going to be able to rent any place decent in the future because it's all going to be automated.
it's all going to be automated. You're, you just, you're going to be SOL. And once again, uh, I'm actually probably going to do a training on this because as we move forward, because with the mad crush of people, automation is going to take over and it's going to be really hard for you to get past these automations. Let's talk about what happened to me in the Wells Fargo secure credit cards. I had two Wells Fargo secure credit cards. Now, once again, I have good credit, but I did it because I wanted to get data points for my YouTube channel. And the only way to get accurate data points is to actually go through the process. And what I've recently discovered is Wells Fargo doesn't offer that credit card anymore. So I have a feeling that that is one of the reasons that they just closed my accounts because they knew that they weren't going to go forward with the program. Even though I was already in the program, they just like, I wouldn't be surprised, you know, if you had a Wells Fargo secured credit card, if they closed it, let me know. But that was automation, automation. And once again, going forward in this new um, world order, if you've got bad information on any of these bureaus, it is going to impact you. So once again, you need to start working on cleaning up these bureaus because it's going to be a heavy factor in what you get approved for and what it's going to be very, very important, very, very important for you to get your stuff straight because once again, you know, I've talked about this on the corporate, uh, the corporate game, your paperwork got to be in order. Your paperwork has got to be in order because there, there was there was this website years and years ago called Luponics, and there was this guy like, "Are you? Let's let me see your papers." Back in World War II, if you didn't have the right papers, you were persona non grata. So we're very much in the digital age. You're getting into a situation where if your paperwork, if your your digital profiles are not correct, you're screwed. You will be screwed. So I'm going to probably do a training on that and talking about how important that is. I'm going to have to write myself a note because one of the things that you need to do is to make sure that your personal data is clean. Uh, there was another YouTuber who was talking about paying her employees late. Okay. Let me say this as an entrepreneur, if you hire people, the last thing that you want to do is have your stuff so funky where you're you're paying people late or bad case scenario you're you're issuing payroll checks that bounce that tells you know because when i didn't say nothing when that person mentioned that but that told me a whole lot about how their situation is set up because i can honestly say i have never had an employee that i could not pay on time and in full you cannot be playing with people and their money you can like, hey, yo, yo, we, we'll pay you later. No, 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 that ain't good enough. Um, once again, as an employer, uh, it is my responsibility to make sure that you're paid on time and fairly, and I pay you what I need to pay you. So once again, this is going to impact so many people, so many people. All right, last night I did a training and the training was lit. It was for the intellectual property school. And that training last night was worth the price of the whole course. So what you want to do is go below, get in the intellectual property school today, because right now what is there is going to take you weeks to do. And once again, I'm not selling you that, you know, you could take this course and in 30 days, you're going to be making all this money. I'm telling you, you're looking at a three year journey for many of you. You could probably get it done in a year. You know, once again, the, to meet expectations, expectations must be properly set. So go ahead and get in there because I'm going to be uploading the training today and sending out emails and stuff. But you want to get into the intellectual property school because last night's training will teach you how to play the game and position you to live where you want to live in these United States of America. So go in that first comment, go ahead and get it. And I will see you guys in the intellectual property school.